Hello, this episode covers the build of some unusual wagons. I'm a big fan of the two Paddington films directed by Paul King. I think they're marvellous, especially the second one, which, in my opinion, is one of those rare occasions when the sequel surpasses the original. A big feature of the second film is Kozlova's Steam Fair, which, in the Paddington universe, is transported around the rail network on a train of four-wheeled, unfitted, wooden-bodied vans, decorated in bright colours and sign-written like the gypsy caravans of old. A major part of the film takes place on the train as it races through the British countryside. Ever since I saw the film, I'd wanted to make a model of the Kozlova train, or at least part of it. I stumbled across the website of John Ott, who has created the Miskatonic Railroad, a freelance layout set in the world of H.P. Lovecraft's scary stories. John has modelled Arkham Station based on Salem. It's incredible. Any modeller should take a look at his site. I'll put a link in the description. On his website, John posted a walkthrough of how he created custom boxcars using printed sides on a card base, and I've done my best imitation of his technique to make the steam fare wagons. Firstly, I watched the film on my computer and took loads of screen grabs of every time the train was on screen, as well as scouring the internet for as many behind-the-scenes pictures as I could find. Shots like this one are great as they get nice close-up details of the sign writing and the colour and texture of the wood. Side-on shots, as shown here, are also extremely useful. It wasn't necessary to get a shot of the full side of the van because I could make it up in Photoshop. The underframes of the vans were bought from Dapol, who are rare among manufacturers in that they sell ready-to-run underframes and unpainted wagons as well as their normal stock. These are brilliant for bashers and bodgers who don't like to ruin a pristine model. The wagon underframes gave me the key dimensions I needed for the vans. I took the screenshots and measurements into Photoshop, then came the painstaking task of trying to rebuild the sides and ends of the van. This was done by duplicating certain pieces over and over again, then blending them all together. It's not too hard to do, it's just time intensive, because once you've done one corner you can duplicate and flip it over to the other, and both sides are the same in any case. I didn't have a good shot of the text on the side of the van, so I found a similar font online and matched it as well as I could. The picture of the chair plane is similarly modified from an image found on Google. The red van was the first one I did. I had the artwork printed at a local Reaper graphics shop in high resolution on an inkjet printer with good quality photo paper. It was printed multiple times over so that I had as many parts as possible. One side uses three parts on its own. The sides, doors and ends of the van were cut from styrene sheet, with the printed paper parts cut out and stuck down using a very thin amount of rocket card glue. I used styrene angle strip to make the reinforcing ribs and metalwork on the sides and ends to give it some depth. This was painted red by hand before fitting. The roof was made from a single sheet of styrene with planks scored in by running a metal ruler down its length, using another metal ruler to keep the lines straight. The yellow van was made with lessons learned from the red one, one of which was that styrene bends and bows really easily, it always wants to return to a flat shape. So lots of reinforcement is needed inside the van to stop the roof from sagging in the middle. I also used thinner gauge styrene strip on the metalwork and added roof details such as the hatches which appear in the film. In order to disguise the saggy roof on the red one, I added the hatch to that one too. The whole lot is fixed to the chassis using a self-tapping screw that goes into the styrene base. In the film, the motive power is an LMS Crab Mogul. I don't have one of those, so Thorkel is the next best thing. I found this a great experience at creating customised wagons. I especially like the yellow one. Maybe one day I'll be brave and make the brake van too. If I were to do it again, I'd start by getting some smaller gauge styrene strip. I'd add tons of reinforcement to the frame and try harder to cut out the styrene sheet carefully because if the parts don't match in size, it doesn't fit together very well. I'd also turn the saturation up on the Photoshop images more as they do come out a bit faded once printed and lose some of their vibrancy. The styrene sections were weathered using powders and the whole lot was sealed with the matte lacquer. All in all, when they do appear in the yard, they do bring a nice splash of colour. I hope you've enjoyed this little build and I hope it encourages you to make your own custom wagons. Thanks again and see you next time.